Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today we are doing a very exciting store walkthrough. This is a shop that sells nothing but china patterns, which is crazy. I feel like it is the real life version of replacements.com. Um, I guess technically not all of the dishes would be considered china like i know they had some stoneware in there which i wouldn't consider china but maybe it is considered china in any case um it was incredible it was a really old like very large probably i'm guessing like late 1800s maybe early 1900s home and all of the rooms were just filled with shelves full of china except for what I'm guessing is maybe a few. I think um, like it was ran by a couple and I'm wondering if they just don't live in a few of the rooms. Like there was no kitchen that I could see. So it might be that they just have a certain number of rooms that they live in, but it was really cool. The whole upstairs, I think there was four rooms upstairs. There was one door that was closed. So I'm guessing like maybe that might be their bedroom. I don't know. But if I had to take a guess, I would say there is hundreds of patterns in this shop. And I was very excited because I was going to hopefully be able to find some pieces for the china that I collect is what I was thinking. Um, but surprisingly, I only have three, technically four patterns if you count Christmas. So I have four patterns of china, one from the 50s, one from the 60s. And I guess maybe the other ones from the 60s as well. In any case, I thought for sure that this would be the place I could find additional pieces. But surprisingly, they did not have one piece of any of those patterns that I had, which I just I thought was really odd. <laughs> but it was still a really cool um, store to look through. I definitely did not film every single pattern just because there were so many it was over an hour that i was in there walking around um and i did buy one thing but i'm not going to share what it is because it's christmas um so i'll just have that in my christmas haul probably end of november beginning of december i'm guessing so um for this voiceover i thought that maybe I could answer some questions instead of just repeatedly saying I love this one this one's so pretty um and I was gonna show you like the backs like the names of all the patterns but then I realized that I didn't really want to be picking up china in a china shop like that much in case I broke something um so I think I did show like certain ones that probably that I wanted to know the names of but I realized it would take a long time to do that and it would just be dangerous as well because you know accidents can happen so i'm not sure if i will have time to answer all of the questions in this video but i am getting very close to 1000 subscribers so i was thinking maybe uh when i hit a thousand subscribers i could do another q a so any questions i don't get to in this video i could answer there plus hopefully more um so the first question i got i didn't get that many questions but i just i don't know the I don't know if I'll have enough time to get through all of them, but <laughs> the first question I got was how I met John, and John and I met at um, my best friend at the time. Um, it was his 19th birthday, which is uh, like legal drinking age in Canada, so um, he was having a party at, um, not really a bar, but I guess kind of a bar but you could play pool there it was basically a pool hall i guess you'd call it um but i don't actually remember talking to john there um but john's sister had been dating one of my best friends for years so i knew her really well and i had actually been to john's house and everything but he just wasn't home but you know like i remember seeing his like graduation picture on the wall and stuff but when the pool hall closed um we walked over to another bar that was still open and we just we were sitting at the same table over at that bar so that's kind of like how we met I guess technically we met like one time briefly before that I used to be a waitress in a 1950s diner and he came in with his sister but I mean I literally just said hello and took his order so it wasn't anything like we didn't really talk at all 
Okay, so then next someone wanted to know what my favorite hobbies were. Um, that is one of the unfortunate things about like depression is kind of takes your joy and interest away from your hobbies. So I haven't really been actively doing any of my hobbies really for a long time, but I'm starting to get back into things. So making videos, I guess, is one of them. And that's, I guess, my most active. Um, I also have been trying to get back into knitting, which is something that I did like, I think I learned how to knit when I was seven, so I did it for years and years, but I haven't done it for a long time, so it's taking me a little while to get back into it. But one other thing that I've been doing is this thing called plastic canvassing, which used to be really popular in, like, the 70s and 80s. I don't think it's very popular now, but it's, it's easier than knitting. Like, it requires less concentration, I guess. Like, if I try to watch TV and knit at the same time, sometimes I will lose count or something, and... I don't know anyway so those are things but I'm thinking about trying to adopt a new hobby because I think that would be helpful in I don't want to say overcoming depression but focusing on hobbies and things can definitely help it's one of the things they tell you I feel like it's one of the first things they tell you like in therapy to do so um but I'm just not sure what that's going to be yet but for now, I've just been making videos and doing the plastic canvas. I've been making this like Halloween haunted house. I don't think I'm gonna have it done um, before Halloween though. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces. So uh, I already have a few Christmas things planned I wanted to do with plastic canvas. So I'm thinking I should just start in on those and then I can pick up the haunted house next, next year. So a few people asked very similar questions. So uh, what do I collect? Uh, how did I come to love collecting vintage? Um, and what and why did you begin collecting vintage? I'm paraphrasing these questions, by the way, because I've asked in multiple places. So I've just been writing them down on a piece of paper. So I guess I'll sort of answer all this together in one. Um, I would say I've always had an appreciation for vintage and um, not just the aesthetic of vintage either. Like I grew up watching old movies, old TV shows. So it was a very big part of my life when I was a child. I also um, have been thrifting since I think I was probably like seven or eight uh like way before it was like a cool or hip thing to do and I loved it we used to go thrifting all the time um and I just never really stopped uh so back then in like the 90s it was really easy to find things from the 70s you know it's it's compared to just finding things from the 2000s to like now so when I was in uh, like middle school, we call it junior high here in Canada, um, or at least where I live, that's what we call it. <laughs> so I dressed completely in vintage, authentic 1970s clothing. People thought I was weird. I didn't care. It was really cool. I would die to have some of those clothes now because it was so easy to find and they were so cheap because it wasn't that far from the time that we were in. So I feel like I could probably just make a whole video about like like to further expand on that but to get into more specific things of what I collect um I think I collect a lot of things but in a very limited way so I feel like the collections that I have I'm not necessarily actively looking to collect more of them so I do definitely kind of cap things at a certain amount um, the things that I collect the most, I would say, is probably like things that I can actually use, like VHS. So I love collecting like old movies. I've, that's probably my biggest collection is VHS. There's like well over 500, um, but I like actively use them all the time. And records, uh, which I'm trying to cap myself at, like what will fit in the record stand, which is a lot, but whew, it's really hard. But again, it's something that I can use and that I use frequently. Um, but other things I collect are like salt and pepper shakers, but I'm not actively looking for more. Like I see them all the time, but I don't buy them because I don't want to have 
a ton of stuff. Um, I collect old cameras too, which I've never shown before, but I haven't got one for well over a year. Um, and I have seen some, but I just, I don't want to have like too much of anything. <laughs> I don't really like a lot of stuff or clutter. And then I guess I have some china patterns, but they're meaningful to me. Like some belong to John's grandma and some belong to my grandma. But I'm not really actively looking to add more china patterns or anything. There's a few pieces I would love to find that would go with the china I already have, but I haven't found any yet. And then um, I guess I, I do have a small collection of Pyrex, but I don't actively collect a ton of it like I see it all the time and I don't buy it because again I just don't want to have too much I guess the main the main thing that I feel and I'm not saying this in a negative way against anyone else but I don't want my home to feel like an antique booth or like a museum if that makes sense not that there's anything wrong with that like if that's what you like so I'm not Again, I'm not meaning this in a negative way, but I, I want my home to feel more like a realistic home did in the 60s or 70s. And from my experience and what I remember from being a child, I don't um, remember people having an excess of things, uh, mostly because people couldn't afford it. So I don't know. That's the vibe that I crave more than the vibe of having like a ton of stuff in like every inch of your house covered but again if that's what you like then that's fine there's literally nothing wrong with that it's just not what I like so that's why I kind of cap things so I feel like really the only things that I'm actively really collecting right now would be probably like VHS and records but I'm trying to stop myself from buying more records if I'm being honest and there's probably a bunch of other things that I'm just not really thinking of right now but I would say that's probably the main things and maybe vintage Christmas decorations but and somebody wanted to know if John was into vintage style before you met like vintage music furniture whatever so um John and I have actually been together for um 18 years so for about 10 plus of those years together we had a completely different style in our home like it wasn't vintage but uh about uh, i don't know maybe like 2014 2015 um john and i sold basically almost everything that we owned except for the bare like essentials that we needed and we moved into a really tiny apartment and paid off a bunch of debt so we basically just became minimalists for three years or so and um it just changed how i feel about stuff in general but then we were planning on buying a home so we almost bought a home um a few years ago but it didn't work out and um which thank, I'm so thankful for now because we literally bought my childhood home. Um, but at that time, like I knew that I wanted to make like my home vintage. Prior to that, we had always been living in apartments mostly. So I didn't really feel comfortable buying like vintage furniture that I might have to get rid of at another time if like we moved and it didn't fit. So we started acquiring vintage things at that time when we were in the process of buying, but then it didn't work out. So we ended up moving into a home like to rent and then I just was I just went for it because I was already in it at that point and so um yeah but I would say that John uh definitely had an appreciation for vintage like style and music and stuff he actually grew up like being really close to his grandma and so she actually like lived with them for a big period of time so he knows a lot of old shows and stuff but I would say he had an appreciation but he wasn't like he wouldn't have cared if we had a vintage style or not I guess but since um being together and especially in the past few years I would say he's developed a like even deeper appreciation because I 
have been getting him to watch a lot of old movies and we've been watching like old TV shows together and I listen to a lot of old music. Um, so I would say he definitely has like a way bigger appreciation for it. But even um, like furniture and stuff is the same thing. He does really like it. In fact, our very first apartment, one of our neighbors gave us a chair that was from the 1950s maybe 1960s and I remember like he loved it I feel like at some point I could show you guys photos maybe like when I do the other like a dedicated q and I could show photos because I'm pretty sure I have photos of our first apartment and the chair and but my first apartment which was by myself was vintage and I do have photos of that um, it was very like 1970s and I wish that I still had some of that stuff but it just Again, like when you are young and moving into apartments, it's hard to, you know, keep stuff sometimes. But that apartment was over 20 years ago that I had that. So I've definitely been into it for a very long time. And actually, I could even, I could probably just actually make an entire video showing photos throughout my life of all these. Because uh, we had a lot of like vintage stuff in our house when I was growing up with my mom as well that I just realized like I have tons of photos of that too so I would say the main inspiration that I get though is from like real life like my grandparents house my great-grandparents house my like great aunt's house I just spent a lot of time in homes like that during the 80s which had you know people didn't uh typically like get rid of things People didn't get rid of things the way that we do now because things weren't as disposable, like things were made to last, so furniture and things like that. So in my experience with, you know, all these multiple homes that I'm drawing inspiration from, um, people would have things from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. So it was like an eclectic mixture of things because maybe you would get some new things along the way, but it wasn't like you were completely changing everything in your home so you know when I was a kid in the 80s and I would go to my great grandma's house there was tons of things from the 50s the 60s and the 70s um, and then maybe some things from the 80s but it was mostly like a lot more vintage things because things were made to last like I said so I don't know I feel like I could talk about this like forever so maybe I should um, make a dedicated video talking about this with some visual aids because I even have photos of like my great grandma's house and stuff so it would be kind of cool so then someone wanted to know and I'm paraphrasing this definitely paraphrasing it but what would I buy if somebody gave me a hundred dollars and I had to spend it immediately like on something vintage and I have been thinking about this since I read the question <laughs> I'm like I don't really know um but I took a look through my eBay, like things that I had hearted on eBay, because I do frequently look on eBay sometimes if I have time to kill. And I'm gonna say I would probably just spend it on some vintage Christmas thing on eBay, is what I'm guessing, because the things that I want the most are generally like Christmas things. <laughs> Um, but I don't really have an exact thing that I would spend it on, like, actually, maybe, I don't know if I could even get these things for $100 though, but maybe a ceramic Christmas tree that's high on my wish list of things that I want, and also an aluminum Christmas tree, but I highly doubt I could get that for under $100, especially because I live in Canada and our dollar is like shit right now. And it, I, well, I feel like it has been for years, but when you buy, when I need to buy something like from the US, it really sucks because it's way, way, way more money than the actual price of it once the conversion is done and then shipping as well. It's just a nightmare. So um, yeah, so there was another question, but I think this is very much along the lines of a video that I wanted to make anyway but somebody wanted to know what my favorite like thrift find was someone asked that separate and then someone asked me what my favorite thrift find my favorite like flea market find estate find and I had 
been wanting to make a video sharing some of my favorite vintage things that I've found over the years because a lot of them I found before I even started making YouTube videos. So I thought it would be a cool video and I could talk about like where I found them and how much I paid and you know, show video of them and stuff like that. So I think I'm just gonna save that for a dedicated video. But when I was thinking about my number one thrift find, um, I don't know if this is actually my number one, but it's probably one of my favorites that came to my mind was the Lefton Bluebird Salt and Pepper Shakers. I found those at Value Village, which is a thrift store, if you're unfamiliar, um, just out on the shelf for $4 with all of the rest of the shakers <laughs> that like they just price everything the same unless they know it's something valuable and sometimes they'll put it behind like a display case or something but yeah they were just sitting there on the shelf and I couldn't believe it because that's not something I thought I was going to find in a thrift store let alone find for four dollars and they were in great condition I don't even think they have any chips but that was probably one of my favorite finds um it's hard to, I don't know, I feel like it's hard to think about just like one specific thing, but I have been writing down like for that video because it's been on my video, um, like list of video ideas for a while. So I have some notes jotted down of things that I wanted to share when I think about them. I just write them down, but I'll probably make that video like soonish maybe now that people have asked about it, but um, I guess that's all the questions aside from that one. At least I think it is. Maybe I missed a question. If you have a question, I guess, for my next Q&A, you could just leave it below in the comments of this video and I'll come back to it. But maybe when I hit a thousand subscribers, I will just make a video and ask for questions and then that way maybe more people will see if they want to ask a question. But in any case, I we are getting close to the end at least I hope so <laughs> um, but I hope you enjoyed watching the video looking at all the different china patterns like I said I couldn't even show them all because there was so many there was also it wasn't very brightly lit in there either um, like there was typically just like a bulb on the ceiling and that was kind of it and it was a cloudy day that day I think um, so I apologize if the lighting isn't the greatest in some areas, especially in the upstairs part. I thought it was like really dark. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed um, looking at all these china patterns and listening to me ramble. Um, I definitely uh, saw a ton there that I liked. <laughs> um, but again, like I said, I'm not looking to collect anymore, but I would have loved to find um, specifically like my grandma's china. I have uh, my aunt sent it to me as like a housewarming gift. So I think I have four teacups and four saucers and then four little bread plates. And I really like it. It's very like fall. Um, if you watched my dining room tour, you would have seen it in that video. I think I showed it. But I would have loved to find like cream and sugar set to go with that um i look on ebay all the time and i've only ever seen one piece i think it's like a water pitcher maybe um so i don't know like maybe it isn't that common i'm i'm not even sure what was produced but i'm guessing in the 50s or the 60s both of my grandmas were like got married in the 50s so they were like 1950s housewives but anyway, that is the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.